Ah yes, welcome, I am Christian. Mm. And this is a tutorial where we are making a roguelike in Pico 8. Um. Haha. <laughs> okay, so I have a full checklist of things to do today. Um, some of these are like small things that we're gonna do first and then there's a big list of things we're gonna do. Hopefully we're gonna get through this list of small things quickly so we can move on to maybe that's what's gonna be today's big goal, which is uh, we're gonna deal with the food. Okay, good. So, um, right, uh, moving on, uh, there's a big problem that that uh, found. Um, remember we were just kind of like, we were, I was flabbergasted um, by a door appearing in a hallway. That should not happen. So I kind of like went back and, and looked at uh, install doors, the install doors function, and looked what the problem was. And the problem was that we expanded it with um, this mget1 and 4, this part here. Well, this has to be in parentheses because there was like or and end and you know, it got all confused and so forth. So this should, um, this should look a lot better now. Can't really tell, obviously, because we it's kind of like a testing a negative, but we shouldn't have doors appearing in hallways now. And at least it's not crashing, so that's one good thing. All right, checking off. Now, a uh, little other thing uh, here in mobs items when we infest a room, there's a CLS that from debugging that I in it, do it doesn't matter, it's somehow a CLS uh, uh, crept in a little bit here, so that's also kind of like a small fix. Mm. Um, right, so here, while we're here, uh, when we're spawning the hallway monsters, uh, these are kind of like the monsters that spawn if there is not enough space in our rooms to spawn even more monsters inside. Um, we are checking for if if is walkable, um, but we should also check for and m get uh, x y equals uh, one. Uh, I just want to, the, I don't want the monsters to accidentally spawn in a hallway, for example, on the spawning location of my of my character. That's that wouldn't be good. Mm. Although it's kind of okay if they spawn on 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 this tile, so that would be good. So maybe maybe we're gonna do. We, this is the second time you're using this check, so it might be worthwhile putting this into like its own function. But okay, or m get equals. Uh, four. Like so. Um, let me check real quick in which order we're generating things because if we're making the monsters before we beautiful the rooms, we might get away without it. Spawn mobs, deco rooms. No, but here's where we do pretty walls. Okay, never mind. Yeah, so I don't want a uh, monster to spawn on a tile like this, that wouldn't be good. And I don't want a monster to spawn on, uh, spawn on a tile like this. So that's why, uh, why, why it's, I think, a good way to, um, to do this check here. So and, um, or, right? Yeah, okay, good. Moving on, a, um, hmm, let's talk about the vases. There's some, th some things about the vases that I don't like, how they work. First of all, um, so I think the vase rooms are actually like very important and this is kind of like a tweaking thing, but um, see, I don't like, first of all, let's get this out of the loop. So it's outside of the loop. I think that's good. Um, and then I want the funk to be a vase. And then we're gonna get a random funk after the loop. That's kind of like a bit of rewriting here, but basically what that means is the first room that we're gonna decorate is gonna be a vase room. And then we're gonna get the other rooms. That means that vase rooms will appear more frequently. And I think this is kind of like something that is good for us. A uh, little detail when about the vases also, um, when we do gameplay stuff, when I bump a vase, I want the vase to, to turn into debris instead of um, a free tile. So this is here, um, so let's pick some debris. Uh, I'm gonna make it always turn into this debris, that's fine. 
76. Let's test this. Oh, we could have tested on this, these vases, but we should have, okay, so if we have one vase room, but it's like a very bad vase room, <laughs> maybe you should reconsider how we're making those vase rooms. They, they, they seem to be very unpredictable, should be more consistent, but yeah, the vase turned into, into the proper debris. And yeah, that's, that looks a lot better now, and it kind of like acknowledges that there was a vase there before. Maybe it's repetitive, but um, yeah. So see, now like we have like this vase room and it's like full of vases. Uh, that doesn't feel so good. Uh, and while we are here, um, there was, yeah, so, so um, we had like ex exclamation mark here when we get the item. We should get one here as well when we get the, um, get the, get the item from a vase. Another little tweak, a uh, tweak -a is uh, when we are um, spawning the chests, we check if the chests are next to a door. We never spawn a chest next to a door. But the way we are now spawning the chest, that's actually not necessary anymore. Because look at this, uh, where is it? I'm living the wrong one. Here, spawn chest. So we always make sure Sure. There we go. We always make sure that the chest is not at the edge of the room anyway, so we don't actually have to check if it's next to a door because there's never going to be a door in the center of the room anyway. So we can just leave this out and just make sure it's in the center. Yep. Uh, yep, good, 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 good. And finally, um, there's a ternary in place chest. Um, here we could use a ternary somewhere. I guess here maybe? What was my ternary idea? I had a, a sweet ternary idea. I mean, we can try to rewrite this. Maybe we, we can we can save some, some stuff. Let's, let's try that. So we are going to go local TLE equals uh, 10. And I'm gonna go m set x y tle and then something like if rare tle equals um, rare and uh, 12 right or 10 it's still not 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 less uh, we could I guess instead of defining it up here how could I define it up here it's the same <laughs> Um, yeah, but it is 10 and 12, yeah, that's good. Hmm, I'm not sure why I wrote it down here. If you have a better solution for this, let me know. I would definitely appreciate it. Cool, so this is done. Now we can move on to the cool stuff, to the cool kids. So the problem I'm having right now is, ah, oh, look at this. There's so many sad vase rooms. I want to have better vase rooms. I need to really figure out how to make better vase rooms. Um, so it's really sad that we got like, oh no, I pressed the button. I, oh no, I pressed the button again. Oh no, that was good again. So we have like food four and we can eat it and nothing happens, mainly because the foods now have different effects that are not covered by the um, eat function, but also like food four and so it, that doesn't seem so great. One function that is really cool about a lot of um, roguelikes, one like feature, one gameplay feature, is that it quite often feature uh, healing potions that are kind of very randomized. So it's kind of like a red potion, blue potion, lavender potion, cerulean potion, um, different kind of like randomly generated colors. And then uh, in every every playthrough, the um, the effect of each potion is randomized as well. So, you know, in the first playthrough, the red potion might be the healing potion. But if you restart the game, then the red potion and now no longer is the healing potion, but now it's the poison, potion, whatever. Uh, and so it's kind of like um, part of the gameplay or part of the strategy or you have to kind of like develop strategies around finding out what the potions do. 
Uh, and we kind of like we can this is kind of like a trope, like a standard thing in in um, in roguelikes. So I think it would be a cool thing to try to implement this as well to kind of like try to f figure out how to make this work. Um, for me, I thought I'm we're gonna use the food. Um, so I have the. Um, um, where is it again? I have like items, I create the items and just call them food one, food two and so forth, right? So it's like, um, come on, come on, come on, paper, come on, oh, come on, come on. <sighs> yes, 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 butcher's app. Yeah, okay, food one, food three, food four, um, six different types of food. Um, and so what I want to do now is I want to generate cool food names for this food. So it's every time you're going to encounter different types of food. And again, you never know which food is going to be which. And we're going to kind of like, we don't have to like randomize the, the functions actually, if we just make sure that each food is always renamed every time you start. Um, that's, what, that's what my think, thinking. So we're going to create a function called FUD names. Let's call it food names. Come on. Let's let's be let's be let's be an adult, um, and we're gonna call this function at the very beginning when we generate the first floor. Maybe we're gonna do it immediately after the make pool. I think that's that's okay. And this f um, function will basically loop through all of our, our foods uh, through all of the items for i equals one comma uh, item name and, and so we're gonna go um, if um, itm type i equals fod <laughs> then and here we can give it like a random a random name so we could for example we could um, I mean the very sim simple way of doing this would be um, item name I equals, we're going to just give it a random number basically as a name. Would that even work? I wonder. Mm. Yeah, let's try that. I wonder how that works. And just to test it out, um, I'm going to actually give, um, give me an item, a food item. I think 12 is a food, I'm not sure. Nope. Uh, for 15, whatever. Yeah, food three. Uh, so this apparently didn't work. I wonder why. Um, do we? Don't we have food? Oh, I think we have we called it f, f, f u d, right? F food. Yeah. So now the food has like a number as a as a name. That doesn't seem so great. So how do we make random uh, random text? as as a name well i don't want to just have like any random text right i want to just just pick it food names from existing food stuff and for this um purpose i have prepared something for you guys so i'm copying it from i'm sorry copying for this from um from another um from the prototype i had here so this is basically i have two uh, arrays uh, the FUD and the edge array. So the FUD arrays is basically different types of um, usually meat-based food. So gyros, frikase, haggis, meat, uh, met, kebab, burger, meatball, pizza. Well, pizza all usually has meat on it. Calzone, pastizio, chops, hams, ribs, roast, meatloaf, chili, uh, stew, pie, wrap, taco, bur burrito, rolls, filet, salami, sandwich, casserole, spam and so forth you can expand this list and it's a comma separated list that we just explode and the other thing is uh, it's an adjective so we're going to co always combine a random adjective and a random uh food stuff so it's yellow green blue purple just different colors but then uh, sweet salty spicy strange old dry wet smooth soft crusty pickled sour leftover mom's <laughs> so it's like mom's pizza um, or leftover pizza, or leftover ribs, leftover hams. You know, we could always combine one of those entries with the other entry, steamed. So hopefully we're gonna have, we can have steamed hams, it's possible. Hairy, smoked, mini, stuffed, uh, classic, marinated, barbecue, savory, baked, juicy, sloppy, cheesy, hot, cold, zesty. 
uh, and we can expand these adjectives. You know, it's it's. Uh, I just have like I want to have like huge collections, so um, we're not going to get um, so the chance for repeated entries are, is very low. Okay, and so what we're going to do now is something like fu, which is kind of like an empty variable that we defined here. Fu um, comma ad equals get rend. So we're gonna get random food and get rend. I'm gonna get random adjective. Is it adjective? I'm not really good at, at these things. Um, and we're gonna, very important, we're gonna delete that adjective. So we're not gonna have a second type of pizza. So we're not gonna have a you know yellow pizza and a blue pizza. I don't like that because then, then it's like, okay, you get very confused and it's like, I, was that yellow or blue? Or I, I don't even know, <laughs> I'm colorblind. <laughs> um, uh, I don't want, um, I want the food and the adjective to be, to be unique for this playthrough. So we don't get like hairy pizza and hairy hams. Or, or you know, two types of pizzas. Um, I think this is this is a really great for separating because you know in your in your mind you need to really make sure that it is separated. So we are deleting um, the random entries that we got from our array, and then we are setting the name. Uh, so it's going to be we don't need this. Um, it's going to be ad dot 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 fu. So let's see how this worked. So we, now we have a cold kebab. <laughs> and this is so good. Uh, I think this, this adds like so much character to the game. I really love it. Let's see if we can maybe, let's go to the, our, to our vase room and see if we can grab maybe some better food. Nothing. Nothing, but we at least we got a butter knife. Let's see if we get to the next one. Oh my god. Okay. I should have equipped a butter knife. Come on, give me some food. Come on, man. It's, it's really good that if you know exactly how you're gonna wanna go, I, you can actually avoid a lot of the enemies. Oh, wait a minute, there's a second... Oh no, I, I, I thought I opened a chest on this floor, but I didn't. I opened it on the previous floor. All right, there's some there's some vases in here. We can we can do this. Hmm. Ah, oh, I died. <laughs> I didn't check my my. Okay, let's try this again. Ah, oh, we cannot get food from here. Okay, there's a lot of vases here, so there's a good chance that we get some food. Crusty meatloaf. <laughs> oh, we already have a crusty meatloaf. And blue hams. And a butter knife. Let's equip the butter knife. Um, let's not die this time around, that would be good. Okay, we can now eat the blue hams. It's a spork inside, and let's open those vases, and then we still have like. crust meatloaf, another one. Sour filet. And we got a monster. Let's throw the spark, yes. And blue hams. So this is basically the idea. So um, so now that the, um, the items have like randomized um, effects, it's kind of like we kind of have to um, dig into our eat function um, to make sure that, you know, the, all the eating has also different effects. Um, it was gameplay. Uh, so we have six different, um, different, um, six different food items, and we only basically deal with one food item. So let's deal with the other ones as, as, um, as well. Um, I have to look up in my um, Google Sheets to make sure that I remember what the different food effects do. Got it. Okay, so um, if effect equals one, that's heal. That's heal a lot. Um, that's gonna be um, in, uh, increase HP. Uh, 
and that is gonna be number four is gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be um stun we don't have that effect yet and then number five and number six are gonna be uh, one is gonna be bless <clears throat> oh no this is curse curse and bless Okay, um, so two of those functions we can definitely um, implement. So heal, we're gonna definitely heal here as well. So the idea is that we not heal by one, but by three. Um, I'm not sure if three is okay. Maybe later we'll, we're gonna have more than three. Uh, plus HP, we're gonna heal by one and we're gonna go um, MB dot max HP uh, plus equals one, right? Or, or H HP max is the HP max. I think it's the, uh, where is it, where is it, um, HP max, right, mm -hmm. so we're adding one to the maximum HP, and that kind of like already is the effect, so there's just like stun, curse, and bless, these kind of like status effects, that's maybe something that we, we add in the next function, but maybe more important than the actual effects is going to be letting our player know um, what the effect of the individual thing was, right? So um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just show a message. Um, what was the, was it show, show mzg? Um, talking about the food that we're talking about. So let's see, you know, show message and then, um, right, so it's gonna be, ITM, ITM, um, name, dot, dot, space, dot, dot, ITM, desk. Um, this is kind of like a new um, ability of our items. I kind of like um, exported it back in the days, uh, back in the back in an episode where where we went through like the final list of our items. I had like um, this thing called a desk or description. Um, let me see here, description. And most of, for most of times it's empty, but for the food stuff, I always round, um, um, put down heals or heals a lot or um, and increases HP or stuns and so forth. Um, so these are kind of like something that you can add to the end of the name of the food to kind of like describe what the food does. Uh, something we can do here, by the way, is we can save some tokens by making sure there's always a leading space for those guys. And costs us nothing. And makes actually everything a little bit more, more nicer. So then in the actual gameplay, yes, here we cannot, we can get rid of this guy. That saves us two tokens. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's see if this food works. We only, we already, ah, I pressed the button. <laughs> I should maybe remove this button. I mean, it's useful, but also it's also a very, so we can eat the green taco and the green taco increases HP. <gasps> Oh, but now it stays forever. So let's make sure that it doesn't stay forever. Maybe 420 seconds. Oh, I, I said dur. I don't wanna have dur. I wanna have it like this. So let's see, mini, mini pastizio. Oh, I love pastizio so much. Mini pastizio increases HP. Let's see if we can get some food. No, not here. Let's restart. Again, um, I wish the fast rooms were a bit more consistent. I, I, I wish maybe there was a way of saying like, okay, give me at least that many vases in for a vase room. Pickled salami and a juicy souvlaki. <laughs> okay, let's try it. So the juicy souvlaki in increased HP. So now we are at, at six HP and pickled salami stuns so we this would be actually negative now and juicy so lucky is um increase hp even more good 
we might actually tweak um it might be worthwhile to tweak the uh, probability a little bit so for example the food that increases hp would appear less frequent the food that heals would appear more frequent than the food that heals a lot so this is something that we would have to actually tweak a little bit and actually in the prototype i had like a special additional stat that kind of like added more entries of that specific food to our pool so the chance for this specific food to come up was kind of like increased um but we're not going to do that just yet we just that's just like we want to have like a, some basic functionality in here first and then we're going to think about the rest good are we good with what's happening i think we're good with what's happening so um, i want to deal with curse and bless and then maybe you can implement one of those so curse um so first of all stun the idea with stun is like every next time that you would be moving instead of moving you do nothing that's what stun does um so if you stun an enemy that enemy will um um will basically do nothing for the, that turn and the next turn they move again if you stun yourself then the enemies get to move uh, and towards you and and do and maybe attack you and you get don't get to move actually one more time and um, curse and bless was what was that again so the curse was um, the next time you get hit you get hit for double amount of of um of damage um so um so yeah and then bless was i think next time you get hit you get hit hit for a half amount of damage so you um and also curse and bless would both disappear when you go up the stairs. So if you get so, because I didn't want to have a situation where you accidentally eat some food and then you're cursed and then you have to like actually get hit yours to, to remove the curse again. But you know, all of the enemies are very strong now because you might be in a very um, far down the line and so you can actually remove the curse. So you would be like stuck in this kind of like, okay, I guess I will die now situation. So yeah, going up the stairs removes the curse, but also um, uh, blessing yourself also removes the curse. So we want to implement maybe those those phenomena uh, next. Uh, let us start with with a stun because I think stun is nice, and then maybe we can like finish up with curse and bless on the next episode. So for for stun and 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 curse and so forth, let us add. So for um, for the mobs, we need to add a new variable for the mobs, and that variable is going to be uh, stun, and it's usually false. And then we're going to add a new um, gameplay function that's going to be um, instead of hit mob, it's going to be stun mob, or let's go instead of heal mob, it's going to be stun mob. Like so. Um, then let us trigger the stun mob. Um, so it's like uh, stun mob MB bam. Um, right. So let us go to stun mob. Where is stun mob? Okay. So this is basically uh, um, HP dot stun equals true, um, and that's gonna be it. We can flash it. Sure, let's let's flash it, and then up uh, the float. We're gonna add a float. That's gonna be a white float. Um, that's correct. We're gonna call the float stun. Um, so which one stuns? Which one is the food that stuns? It's gonna be food number a number sixteen. Should be the one food that stun. Um, so let's see how that looks. Um, we're gonna start with food number 16 in our inventory. And if we eat it, we should get stunned. I pressed the button. <laughs> I always pressed the wrong button. <laughs> it's a juicy pizza. Don't eat that pizza, it's a bad pizza. Um, there's a problem here. Ah, yeah, the HP doesn't exist anymore. Mini gyros. Okay, it goes up. Um, I would go uh, um, subtract like four from the from the coordinate, so it's kind of more centered around the enemy hot taco. Uh, maybe three instead. I'm glad. 
this is this is this is working nicely okay so the only thing left for us to do is to actually make this do something because obviously that's not doing anything yet um so here um first of all let's make sure that the enemies get stunned mm. so here do ai um Let's see. If M is not equals P mobs, um, uh huh. Moving. Uh huh. That's good. Um, we could do it here. Oh, yeah, let's do it here. Um, so it like doesn't matter what the mob is currently doing; it will skip a turn. So we're gonna go if. Um, M dot stun then else and and we're gonna go M dot stun equals false and then um, when we when it's our turn so that's gonna be update function how do are we going to do this um, so after P turn update P turn right. The question is, are we going to do this here or somewhere else? Huh. Okay, so first let's let's just, just deal with the, the the position that is usually happens where the, the UI had a turn. So if um, if this is happening, then and here's where we're gonna do this, right? So we're gonna go do like I'm gonna check the end. Um does check and return something? I, I did, it returns something, right? Um, false. Mm -hmm. This is so confusing, but uh, <laughs> but I guess it's fine. <laughs> if check and um, then uh, if uh, p mob dot stun then else end. Oh, just just like no, it's 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 just if p mod that's done. Okay, that's good. And then we're gonna go p mob um, dot stun equals false, and then immediately do ai right. Update throw. Do AI, where's do it? There's do AI. Mm -hmm. So whatever happens immediately, we we skip the we skip um, updating the game. We we return back to do AI. And then um, when we, <clears throat> but this is also something that should happen at the end of our turn, right? Because technically, uh, when we do something and there is no AI moving, we would be back to our turn, but we would be still stunned. So we should also um, do a similar check here. Um, so if oh, this is getting really complicated um, because we check end here. Let's do a multiple 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 step process. Um, well, I guess if. If we only do, uh, if we don't have to do the AI. Ah, uh, this this is this is the tough cookie. We could do a return here. Uh, and technically there won't be a situation where we're gonna skip the AI and we're stunned at the same time. That's not, not something that's gonna happen. <clears throat> yeah, 
yeah, so something along these lines. Um, I don't want to call do AI twice. That's why I'm. That's why I did the return here. Um, or something like. Well, then in that that case, we don't actually have to do this at all, right? Yeah, we don't need to do this at all. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine uh, because we always we never gonna have a situation where we stunt and uh, we're gonna skip the eye and if we do then whatever then we're gonna live with it with our lives. Um, so let's see. Um, let let me sh try to um, get stunned while the monsters are attacking me. Okay, so if I eat something now, uh, the monster should actually get to hit me. See, because I was I used the turn to eat something, um, I got stunned, and then the monster swooped in because um, I I used the turn to eat something, and then I was still stunned, and then the monster got got a hit on me. So let's let's see if we can um, if we can stun a monster. How that looks. Oh man, that was a monster. So. Let me see. So if I stun this monster, let's do that. Um, so that monster is now uh, has been stunned for a turn, and that so it, they didn't get to move. So if I move now closer, they move closer now. Okay, because they're now they're no longer stunned. They were just stunned for one turn. And maybe that's a bit weak because the monster gets hit and then it doesn't get to move this one turn, but then immediately it starts moving again. So maybe it doesn't feel so great. Maybe for the monsters, if this is not a player, maybe stunning them for two turns would feel better. That's something we're gonna figure out um, while we're playing the game while play testing. Might feel a bit too weak if if oops, sorry if we if it just stays for um for a turn. Okay, guys. So this is going to be it for this episode. Uh, next episode, I want to go over the um, curses and and blessings, and then I want to also want to start looking at some of the special abilities of the monsters that we planned ahead. We had a monster that stuns on attack, so I want to implement that for sure. And we had we had some monsters that were moving slowly. These are all, are all the things that I want to implement on the next episode. So uh, the code is as always going to be the WD. And today I'm wearing a T-shirt. Check out the T-shirts in the store, and of course, uh, check out our Discord channel where people are really excited about the upcoming seven-day roguelike challenge. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.